Throughout history, great empires have risen and fallen, whether from foreign threats, incompetent leadership, a dysfunctional society, or some other reason, empires eventually fade away. But just because things are going bad doesn't mean it has to stay that way. Ottoman Empire stocks may be going down in 1836, but we're going to buy the dip. People may call this empire a dump, but where they see trash, I see potential. And it's time for me to use that potential and put the work into making the Ottomans great again in Victoria 3. Now, while the Ottomans are not looking very hot right now, it still isn't impossible to fix them. I only have to do four of these six journal entries to make it so this campaign has an actual chance of being successful. You can reclaim Syria from Egypt, or you can urbanize a bunch of your country. You can teach people how to read, you'll never get this by the way. Keep people from revolting against you, or expand your empire, and fix your bureaucracy too. Change legitimacy calculations again, and you can't even go for religious schools day one, so I just had to work on fixing my bureaucracy and army. It took some time, but by 1840 I had made a professional army. and. By that time, I had just enough legitimacy from the church and intelligentsia to be able to push through some school reforms. Hell, even got it first try. This was just the beginning of a successful legislation streak. I needed to upgrade my economy to agrarianism because anything is better than traditionalism. Then I worked on advancing my tax law to per capita taxation. I had to make some deals though, but with some tax cuts and promises not to you know, rock the boat too much, I didn't manage to get the law through. The bureaucratic reform wasn't over, I still needed to get off of a uh, hereditary bureaucrat's law, and the Vicky gods smiled on me and I let it pass the first try. Soon after this, the French offered me to join their market, and to make sure I joined, they brought up the fact that they had paid off my debt earlier and I owed them an obligation, but I would have joined anyways because I only benefit from this. By being in the French market, it was much easier for me to modernize my military and finally get to retaking Syria from Egypt. Now unfortunately, you can't retake all the claims in one war for some reason. At least this time, unlike in real life, the Europeans would not get involved. But unfortunately, I could tell the army was still not going to do that well in this war, so I planned a naval invasion of Egypt. Also, we finally finished reforming our bureaucracy, which was our first step to rebuilding this empire. The Egyptians weren't even ready for my naval invasion. The army swept through most of their land without a fight. It did come at the cost. I got completely destroyed in Anatolia, but I was winning faster than they were winning. So I forced them to accept the peace deal. And when the truce ran out five years later, I just went back in to take the last state from Syria. But it was looking tough since Austria decided I was going too far now, but once I convinced my best buddy France to join on my side, Egypt backed down, and I had secured the second reform. And since I had no uprisings from the start of the game, I also got the third reform I needed without doing much. However, for the last reform, things were getting kind of tricky since I was running out of the time and could barely scrape enough money to build enough troops to get the army reform. Left with no choice, I had to just raise taxes on people, and while people were understandably kind of mad, I did get the 250 brigades necessary to finally complete the last reform I needed. This gave me some much appreciated claims on Europe that I fully intended on using. Of course, I had to start with reclaiming Greece, and I gotta hand it to them. Even though they had no outside support, they were just decided they were gonna fight to the death here. Now unfortunately, I can't say that fight really did much to me. Also, I love how the frontline splitting make it so the Greeks would make their final stand on some random Aegean islands instead of their capital. But anyways, they were forced to surrender and to live on those Aegean islands since I didn't know that was a separate state I needed to take. While I was expanding in the Balkans, I thought I might as well just take Montenegro as a little treat. But now the Egyptians are trying to tell me what lands I can and can't have. So obviously I have to respond and say that they can't have Lower Egypt anymore. The Montenegrins give in anyways to try to spare Egypt the war, but too bad for them. I wanted the war with Egypt anyways, and they have no friends, so the superior Ottoman army once again marched up the Nile and forced the Egyptians to surrender some of the most valuable land in their country. 
Unfortunately, France seemed to have a bit of a rebel problem and lost 80% of their country to rebels. Now, desperate for help, they reached out to me for an alliance to solidify our friendship and crush the rebels together. Upon considering this offer, it was clearly time for me to part ways, so I left them and left their market. Now, this was clearly not a very good move for my economy, but I believed we could get through this hard time. I was still dragged into the war, unfortunately, and upon seeing the rebel army the French were facing, the only support I was going to send to them would be moral support. And so, unsurprisingly, the French rebels won, and I pieced out with the new French government. Still, I was approaching bankruptcy, and the only thing I could do at this point was just to downsize the army so I could start paying off some of the debt. I thought maybe getting rid of slavery could help the economy, but certain people did not take too kindly to that. It's also pretty funny how I didn't even mobilize troops for the French Civil War, but I'm still getting an event that we were sabotaged anyways. The troops swear they didn't have to fight in France, but no, it was the evil Bantu who kept them from going there. I decided it was time for me to assert dominance over the Egyptians again. It was finally time to end the idea of Egyptian independence and for them to just become a subject of mine. Now doing this triggers an event and for some reason, both options in the event make the opinion of myself go down. I guess puppeting Egypt as the Ottomans just gives you self-confidence issues. Next, I wanted to work on securing Arabia, starting with Shamar, but once again, the Austrians had decided I'm out of control and needed to be stopped. Now, too bad for the Austrians, they just didn't have the force to back up their threats since they just bounced off my army in Bosnia, and seeing the Austrians make no progress in that front, Shamar was forced to surrender. Once I had the opportunity to declare Turkish the official culture of the Ottoman Empire, I got to work enriching certain people to be the correct culture. Now, I tried to develop a police force to help with issues caused by having a, a few people who were not happy with the direction of the government. Some protesters gathered to stop the legislation and despite my best efforts to explain why they were wrong, the bill was pretty much dead in the water. The Ottoman Empire needed unity and nothing unites people like a successful war. Now, it was supposed to be a simple war to take Hejaz, but I guess Austria had decided they were the protector of Arabia in this game because they once again intervened this war to stop me. It didn't matter because once again, Austria struggled to push me in Bosnia since I had superior soldiers, general traits, and racism, so I guess our units just had way better stats. The Austrians tried to send troops to Hejaz to stop me, but there just wasn't enough of them to stop me from winning and forcing Hejaz to join me. While I was working on annexing Egypt, I was also trying once again to get rid of slavery. Now the nobles were once again not very happy about this and organized a revolution, but not to keep slavery though. No, they were tired of women being denied property rights in the Ottoman Empire and it was time to make a change to that. I guess the nobles just wanted more female slave owners, but unfortunately for them, that dream was killed. The British did come to me to offer me money for the Suez Canal, but I refused because I knew the Ottomans were capable of doing this all by themselves. I just needed to get the money from somewhere. Also, I realized by 1872, I never looked at America to see what they were doing and all I could see, it wasn't very well. For some reason, New York City was now the capital of CSA, and South Carolina stayed with the Union. I just really wished America made any sense in this game. Unfortunately, I made a serious blunder in foreign policy by accepting to join a war against Austria for Northern Transylvania. I was so focused on getting land, I forgot I was also nearly bankrupt too. Considering the Austrians horribly outnumbered me in this front, I knew I had to peace out if I didn't want to completely explode. Later on, I did manage to finish surveying for the Suez Canal, and when the time felt right, I got to work. Once I queued up one Suez Canal, I thought, why should I settle for one canal? So I queued up four more. Now the budget was not a fan of this, so I had to be careful with how I spent my money to be able to finish these canals. Foolish me thought I could squeeze in a quick war to get the rest of Yemen, but you'll never guess who decided to intervene to stop me. And yes, the war ended exactly how you expected it to because they can't even send soldiers there. 
Sadly, I couldn't finish all five Suez Canals and only got three of them out, but still, it is a great accomplishment of Ottoman engineering to be able to get this done. I then worked to assert my dominance over the Tunisian government, and the Austrians once again joined to stop me from map painting. At this point, it just felt personal because despite having an ongoing war with Great Britain at the time, the Austrians still wanted to stop me. And I can't fight a two-front war against the Austrians, so I just end up getting pushed through Libya. But thankfully, the British kept convoy raiding the Mediterranean, so the Austrians couldn't support their armies there for too long, and are eventually forced to withdraw. Although we technically won the war by the end of it, it really didn't feel like a victory. Not only had I lost my great power status, but I had taken on so much debt I was beginning to default, and not even raising taxes could save me. So I just had to bite the bullet and declare bankruptcy and hope for the best from here. The government was completely unstable, almost all the interest groups in the country hated me, and because my government was so unpopular, I couldn't even pass legislation to make them like me, so I was completely stunlocked. At least I could cope with the fact that I had brought Austria down with me. And I don't even know when this happened, but Brittany also gained independence from France. I don't even understand how they managed that. And with the Egyptians now rising up, I had to make some kind of change to help my nation. I wasn't just sick anymore, I was terminally ill. But as I was trying to convince the people that things weren't so bad, I remembered the greatest cure for an alien economy in Vicky 3. Tax cuts. See, after that, the standard of living finally started going up again, and the political parties were not as mad so I could have them in my government. I boosted the workforce by allowing women to own property and finally got myself back into great power status. Feeling good and seeing that Austria was still dealing with their internal issues, I figured I might as well annex Serbia, but I can't get away with anything in this continent because now the Prussians are joining against me. It's just so great that the AI will support nations and has no ability to actually help. But once the war is done, I managed to get Wallachia without any intervention, which felt good that I finally caught a break. There was only one more protectorate for me to pump it in the Balkans, Moldavia. And unsurprisingly, Russia joined against me this time, which of course makes the war a lot tougher, but I figured with better quality troops I could probably get a victory here. But then it got worse, and the Qing joined against me. How could I think I could get through a Vicky 3 campaign without China intervening in a war against me? As the war started, I realized I had absolutely no chance to win. Who cares about technology when you can just win on a pure numbers basis? Even my ironclads can't even kill a single man of warship from China because this game is so well balanced. My armies were completely smashed in the Balkans, and when the Chinese were about to take Constantinople, my game mysteriously crashed. And despite my best efforts, I have been unable to reopen that save. Now, despite this campaign ending in failure, I hope you guys still did enjoy watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you made it this far. And with how this channel has been growing, I'm hoping to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Fingers crossed. But anyways, enjoy the rest of your day and see you next time.